everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Tuesday Techniques with me Jackie Blakemore of So Much More Fun and I just wanted to uh, welcome you all. So in today's session we're going to be talking about lengthening and shortening patterns um, and so while I'm just waiting for people to come on um, let's just uh, run through a few bits of housekeeping. Uh, so you might be familiar with these by now, but we've been running these sessions every Tuesday at 12.30 UK time. And the idea of the sessions is to give you some hints and tips about how to get started working with sewing patterns um, and to uh, how to make some adjustments to help you fit those patterns. So the sessions are designed to be between 30 and 45 minutes long. Um, I record the sessions and they also get posted to the So Much More Fun website. Uh, so let me just see if I can give you the URL for that. There we go. So the So Much More Fun website. So if you um, don't manage to catch this live for some reason and you still want to kind of watch it, then go head over to the so much more fun uk website and I post all the recordings from the previous sessions in there. So there's some great hints and tips if you haven't already seen them. Um, if you are joining me live, then be sure to say hello. I should be able to see your comments, ask questions, and I'll do my best to answer your questions as we go along. If you're watching this on the replay, then please make sure to just type hashtag replay. You can still ask questions. I pay attention to that and kind of see who's been posting from there. And also on the website, you can just log in and you can start to add comments to the posts in there as well. So um, please do let me know if you've got any questions about any of these topics. Also, if you find them really useful, or if there's anything else that you'd like to know, any kind of other aspects that we haven't necessarily covered. Okay, just get rid of that for a second. Um, yeah, so the programme for the next few weeks. So I'm planning to go live, carry on going live over the next few Tuesdays. Um, and so in the next session, which will be on the 22nd, we'll be covering um, basic shoulder adjustments. So things that you might want to do around the shoulder area, because if you watched any of the previous sessions, you'll know that to make the changes to the garment, we tend to work from the top down and try and get a nice fit um, at the top line. And then we work down and make our other adjustments after doing our lengthening and shortening which is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so yeah, basic shoulder adjustments on the 22nd. Then on the 29th, I'm going to be doing bust adjustments. So if you struggle with, if you're not a B cup, um, then it's likely that you might need to make an adjustment to your patterns. Unless you're choosing a pattern brand like Cashmere Rhett or Itch to Stitch or a couple of the, um, a few of the other big pattern brands have some patterns where they've got um, an adjustment for cup size. Um, in those pattern brands, then you probably would want to pick the right cup size, but where there isn't a, a cup adjustment built into the pattern, then you'll want to make a small or large bust adjustment, so or full bust adjustment. So I'll be covering that um, between Christmas and New Year. Um, and again, if you uh, can't catch that, that's no problem. Um, uh, just have a look on the website for more details. Uh, and then going into January, we're going to start looking at adjustments for the back. Um, and the sleeve and then a full tummy. So for the full program, just have a look on the website and you'll see all the details of the dates when all the sessions are gonna be. Um, and then into February, uh, we're gonna be looking at trousers, the tricky the tricky place of trousers. So I need a bit of a run up for that. <laughs> um, it's not the easiest adjustments to make. Um, and I think fitting trousers is a bit of a, a dark art, um, but I've got some hints and tips for you and we'll be ready to go when in February. Okay, so um, welcome everybody who's live. Um, let me know who's here and um, and who you are, say hello. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll get started on um, these adjustments then. So have you ever lengthened or shortened a pattern? Um, have you ever tried? How did it go? What kind of results did you get with that? Um, I know from my experience that I'm quite short, so it's quite common for me to have to make some kind of adjustment in the length of a pattern. Um, and, uh, and when I first started, when you start to look at patterns, you'll notice that they sometimes have a line on that says where you can lengthen or shorten that pattern piece. Um, and that's OK. Uh, that kind of gives you a starting point. And that's where I started when I was first making my um, pattern adjustments. Um, or you can just start to add length to the bottom of the garment and um, the bottom of the pattern piece and so on. So what we're going to talk about is um, 
some reasons why you would or wouldn't do that and um, where the lengthen and shorten lines are on patterns and what to look for um, when you're going to make those changes. OK, so some common misconceptions about lengthening and shortening garments. If you're thinking about shortening a garment that's already made, you've got some certain constraints in place in that you can't. It's quite hard to shorten it in the middle of the piece of the of the dress or top that you're wearing. So you'll tend to have to add length at the bottom by maybe adding a band or a frill or something like that, or you'll need to um, shorten it at the bottom. But when we're talking about adjusting pattern pieces, because we're doing it earlier in the process of making the garment, we have a lot more flexibility about what kind of changes we can make and where we can make those adjustments. And so rather than just have to do everything at the bottom or the very top of a piece. So, for example, sometimes you could add a band in a waistband or something like that to give a bit of or a, a yoke to give a bit of extra length in the top of a skirt, for example. Um, once you've. Um, when you decide what you're going to do with that, then um, you're kind of fairly fixed because the main body of the uh, the garment is fixed. But with a with a dressmaking pattern, you've got a lot more flexibility. So we don't have to be constrained by just adding length or shortening length at the bottom of the pattern pieces. Um, the other thing that I got for, fell into the trap of was that the pattern pieces often have a lengthen and shorten line on, and I um, I kind of thought that you have to do it at that place. Um, but what I've since realized is that they put that lengthen and shorten line in the most convenient space, but it's not always the right place for where you need the extra length or where you need to make that adjustment. So we're going to have a little look at that in a moment. Um, also, um, the pattern pieces, when you lengthen and shorten them, unless they're very straight pieces, then where you make that adjustment, it doesn't always line up. And so it can be difficult to know what to do after you've made that adjustment and how to get those lines to balance or what line you should follow and which line you should ignore. The other kind of misconception is that um, lengthening and shortening is just to address the finished length. Um, but that's not quite true because you can use lengthening and shortening techniques to actually move features of the garment up or down. So, for example, if you have a short torso um, and you're making a dress, then you can use the lengthen and shorten adjustment to shift the, the placement of the waistline um, to suit your body. And that might mean using a combination of shortening in the top part of the um, garment uh, pattern piece and then lengthening in the bottom. So you may end up um, taking away in one area and then adding back in in a different place to actually move the features of that particular garment to suit your body shape. That's true of things like moving the hip point or moving the bust point of a garment. Um, and you can also use it to change the outline or the shape of the garment. So if you imagine a circle skirt is quite wide at the bottom, um, uh, but when you shorten it, you can actually... Um, sorry, when you lengthen it, you can actually make it still seem a bit straighter uh, because you're not increasing the angle um, of where you're lengthening the garment. So you can actually create um, what looks like a narrower, more A-line type garment by lengthening um, in different places and, you, and keeping the same width of the hemline. So you can use it to change the, um, uh, the silhouette of a garment or a top or something like that if you want to do that as well. So we'll look at some of those examples as we go through too. OK, so where should we lengthen or shorten? Well, the real thing to try and understand is we could need to add or add or take away the length where we need it. Um, and that's not always in the same place. So, for example, um, if I'm wearing a top and um, the bust point is quite low, I'm quite short in my body. So the bust point is quite low, then I might really need to be making an adjustment kind of here in this area of the garment to bring the bust point up. Um, to suit my suit my body shape um, and that's it's rare that you would see a length and shorten line in this area um, and that's because this area is quite a complicated there's a lot of stuff going on in terms of the pattern in this area it doesn't mean you can't make the adjustment but it just means that um, it's sometimes a bit harder or a bit you've got a bit more to think about when you're making an adjustment in this area and I'll explain what to look for in a second um, equally if you've got a um, a problem with the, the length of the bodice of a garment, then lengthening and shortening it below the waist won't make any difference to the fit of the garment in this top section. So you really want to be looking at where the waist point is in the garment, and then you want to make your adjustment above the waistline at the kind of trying to find the easiest place really to make that adjustment. So 
we're going to look at an example of um, some pattern pieces uh, for a shift dress um, and a skirt and a top. And I'm just going to talk you through some of the things that I look for when I'm looking to make some of these adjustments. But really, you want to try and find the area that's going to make your life easiest while still giving you the best result. Um, equally, you can again we're going to talk about shoulder changes so you can lengthen and shorten out the shoulder but you just need to consider as well the impact on the armhole okay so let's get into how we're going to make the adjustment so in the most basic level i'm just going to change my camera over uh, let me just do that okay so i've got a pattern piece here and this is for um the back of a shift dress and on this pattern piece, we have um, a lengthen and shorten line, which is kind of, so the waist point is here. I don't know if you can see that very well, but the waist point is here. And the lengthen and shorten line is just above the waist point. So if we made the adjustment where the lengthen and shorten line is, what that would do is move the waist point up or down, depending on um, what adjustment that we make. So at the simplest level, I can just fold over where the lengthen and shorten line is. And I can move that to however much I want to shorten by. So if I decide I want to shorten by, um, I don't know, half an inch, um, then I can just measure my half inch up from my lengthen and shorten line. And then I can fold over my pattern piece and just match it up to that new line that I've drawn. And that will shorten the pattern by half an inch. OK, and you can stick that down and make your changes. Now, what you might notice, I don't know if you can see that very well on the camera, but now where I've made that adjustment, um, there is a dart in the way on this pattern piece. And so the light legs of the dart don't quite line up anymore because I've made an adjustment here. And this is quite common kind of when you're trying to make adjustments in different parts of the pattern is that you might then need to make some kind of adjustment to the um, the features in that area of the pattern. So in this case, what I would be doing is drawing a new line um, for my dart, for example. And what this is going to do is shorten the dart. But then if I'm shorter in the bodice anyway, I would want to shorten that dart. So I'm just going to join up the kind of leg of the dart. So if you can see that now, we've got the purple line, which is like the new stitch line for the dart, and then the red line, which is the old, the original line. And you would do that on both sides. So that's one example of shortening. Now, shortening is a little bit easier, I think, because you're kind of keeping the pattern all in the same direction. Um, and we're assuming here that we're shortening by the same amount um, across the whole pattern piece. Um, but you'll also notice, again, that there's a bit of a jag um, in the edge of the pattern here. So again, you'd want to smooth out the line um, here, um, kind of uh, to get a nice smooth curve around the edge of where you've made the adjustment. Right, so then um, the opposite to that obviously is adding length. And so to add length, what we need to do is we need to cut our pattern open and then insert a new bit of paper. So I'm just gonna do that at the bottom um, a bit further down. This is a bit easier in this area because the pattern's fairly straight up and down. The hip line is here. This is going to add it between the waist and the hip in this case. So if I've got a longer kind of lower torso, then I might want to drop the hip a little bit. Equally, if I just wanted to make this a longer skirt, then I would really want to keep the hip shaping where it is. And I would just add it kind of in this section here. Now, the reason why we might not add it at the bottom um, we could do that in this case because this is a fairly straight hem on the bottom of this piece. But if this was curved or it had some kind of detail or some, you know, some um, a different kind of hem style, then you end up trying to trace off the length, which can be quite difficult. Whereas if you cut the pattern piece a bit further up, um, you can add the length in while retaining whatever detail there is going on at the bottom of the pattern piece. So. When I'm drawing my line, I'm just using my gridded ruler here to make sure that I'm drawing it at right angles to the, the sort of grain line, really. And I'm just going to draw my straight line here. Um, and then I can cut my pattern piece. I'm just also going to extend the grain line down. And I'll explain why I'm doing that in a second. So I'm just going to cut my pattern piece now um, along that line. You might be thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm cutting my pattern pieces. I'm not sure about that. 
we said in one of the previous ones, that's what sticky tape's for. So worst case scenario, you decide, oh, I've made a mistake, put it back on, stick it back together. Nothing broken, you know, carry on as you were, okay? Um, so now what I'm going to do is just grab a piece of um, scrap paper. I've got some scrap paper up here. Here we go. And I'm just going to place this underneath my pattern piece and stick my pattern piece to it. Okay. And so now what I can do is measure down, let's say I wanted to add an inch to the length. I can measure down an inch and draw my new line. And then what I want to also do is make sure that I keep my pattern piece in line with the original garment. And so I extended that grain line. Uh, so I've got like a common line that I can join back up to. Um, and I've, I'm just going to draw that in as well. So now I know that when I put my new piece, my old piece back on, um, I can line up that grain line. Should have perhaps done it in a different colour to make it clearer. That grain line and the top of my pattern piece, and then I can stick that back on. And now that allows me to add some extra length. So what do we do with these side bits? I've got a lot of extra paper here. So in this case, because it's quite square, you can see I can just really extend that line straight down. So I'm just going to draw that line in and then the same here. And we're going to do an example where it's not square so that I can show you that as well. And then all you would do is, I'll just cut this extra off here. All you then do is to cut your um, excess off. And now you've got your lengthened out pattern piece. And this, like we said, this will only add length now below the hip. So it's not going to change anything in the top area or the fitting or anything like that. It's just going to add it below the hip. Now, what you might find is that if you're short in the body and longer in the leg, then you may end up making this shortening adjustment here to take some, some width out, some length out of the top. Um, so we did half an inch there, and then we've added an inch back in here. So overall, the dress will end up being half an inch longer, for example. But you will have shifted any features that affect the fit, like the waistline and the hip line, up to move where your body um, needs them. OK, so I'm just going to check to see if we've got any questions so far. Um, yeah, so um, so that's so that's how you would um, shorten um, a piece by just folding that over and add length to a piece by adding a piece in. Now, the other things to think about um, in conjunction with this are that joining to this back piece is going to be a front piece. And so now we've made those length adjustments and this won't quite match up. So you can see here now that the, um, if I was to fold out this dart, for example, I can do that very easily. Try and do that. So now the length of my front piece and my back piece won't quite match up. Um, you look now so can you see i don't know whether you can see that at the bottom let me just show you um if i line up the top then the bottom is a little bit shorter oops there we go if i line up the top then the bottom is a little bit shorter on the front so i would need to make the same adjustments that i've made on the front um generally to the back and then make sure that these lines then match up um so that when i come to sew my seams together um, that these are going to nicely fit together as they did originally. So just thinking about how you are making your changes and what pattern pieces relate to the pattern piece that you've modified. Um, so in this case, case, we know that we've adjusted the length of the side seam. And so anything else that joins at the side seam, we would have to make the same adjustment. OK, so, so just to consider that. And that's why in some cases, Again, if we look at, if we wanted to make the adjustment to bring the bust point up, for example, we might want to try and do that. So in this example, the bust point is here. This is the one for this size. And then we've got the kind of dart starting here and that's coming down here. Um, and then we've got another bust dart coming um, out here. So 
what we probably don't want to do is think about making any changes in this area because there's a lot of stuff going on here. Equally, we probably don't want to make a change here because if we do that, we're going to have to do something with the armhole. And if we're just getting started, um, then this can be a bit more complicated. Like I said earlier, it's not impossible. It just means that you've got to have, kind of think a little bit more about it. Um, and so the, the optimal place, if I want to raise the bus point, is to kind of pick a line where it's not going to interfere with anything. So I might make my change kind of at this point here, um, where I can I can go up by my whatever my um, amount is that I want to shorten, for example, or lengthen. And it's not really going to interfere with any of the details that are going on here. I haven't got to think about moving the dart or changing anything here, but it's going to raise my bus point up if if I'm shorter in the body or got very high boobs. <laughs> um, how lucky for you. Um, OK, so um, but again, you've got um, markers here again for the same. The benefit of using the length and shorten line is that it's usually placed in the same point on the pattern pieces um, that match up with one another. So if I shorten this one and shorten this in the same place, they're going to match up. But again, it's going to affect the length of your dart on this front piece. So just something to be aware of. OK, so I'm just going to check to see that I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. Um, yeah, so the other example that I was going to show you is where the lines aren't necessarily as straight as this. And I've seen um, kind of beginners making mistakes in this area. So I just wanted to cover this one specifically. So I'm just going to show you this is the skirt part of a, a dress pattern, um, an itch to stitch chai dress. And um, you can see here that if it's a dress and a top and the, the hemline for the top is here, uh, for the shirt and the hemline for the bottom is here. Now you might be thinking, well, why have they drawn a separate hemline? And one thing I wanted to point out was that um, the width when you shorten it to here is obviously quite different to the width when you shorten it at the bottom. Um, and so this makes sure that it stays in line with the, the kind of flow of the silhouette of the garment. Um, and this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about is how much you can lengthen or shorten a pattern by. So it's probably not best practice to take a pattern that's this length and then try and make a mini skirt out of it by just kind of folding it up and taking out a load of the length. Because you'll see as I start to fold this pattern piece, um, we get a greater difference between you know, the, the top and the bottom sections. And you need to then decide how you want to accommodate for that. Now. Let's say you did want to make this this size of a change. So I'm just going to fold this over. Um, probably the best practice is to go somewhere in <clears throat> between the two. If you wanted to keep the width of this hemline the same, so you wanted it to be quite a full skirt, um, then I'd be inclined to take a line um, that is sort of going um, sort of between the two. So it's going to curve out a little bit more at the hip and then come down to this point here. If we take a straight line, then we're going to keep it the same at the hip. Um, and then it's going to be more A line when you kind of bring it down here. So you're going to end up with a more A line skirt. And that's still OK as well. Um, you can still you can still make that change too. Um, and, but what that's going to give you is still going to give you quite a full um, bit at the bottom, um, as opposed to uh, here where you're going to have um, it's going to be narrower um, so it's kind of going to fit closer to the hip uh, in this case so just really thinking about um, how you lengthen and shorten when you're doing this side um, equally if we wanted to add any length in here um, <clears throat> so what you're going to do is let's say we wanted to add it here so we could um, we could add a piece of paper at the bottom and we could continue the line down and we could make it wider and that would give us a longer, wider skirt in the same proportions. If we decide we don't want it any wider at the bottom, then we could just cut the, um, cut the pattern piece across here. And insert our new bit of paper. And stick this on. And then measure down however much it is that we want to increase the length by. So let's just add, again, let's add another inch. I don't think I've given myself enough paper here, maybe. Um, 
And then we'd want to do our whatever our grain line was, just to make sure that's lined up. And then we can stick our new pattern piece on. So that's going to give us the same width at the bottom and the same profile for our skirt. But what you don't want to do is just bring a line straight down here because if you were just to join those pieces up like that, your skirt's going to kind of come down and then there's going to be a, a dip in the middle and then it's going to kick out at the bottom, which isn't which isn't ideal. That's not really what you're looking for. You want to try and blend the lines um, so that you get a nice uh, combination between the two. And usually that means taking half of the half of the, the top section and adding half to the bottom section. So you end up with a line um, that kind of is going to take off the top and add to the bottom to give you that nice smooth line. And you just want to sort of blend that in so you don't end up with any sort of jaggedy edges. So I've taken a little bit off the top of the pattern there and then brought that down to a nice smooth line um, at the bottom. So that gives us our, um, our nice shape and keeps our shape. And so that's how you would add length um, to pattern pieces where they don't quite match up. On this side, it's straight, so you can just draw a straight line there. Um, but on this side now, you can see that you get a nice smooth line going down the side of the pattern. Okay, so where you've got a situation um, where you've got different um, shapes, then, oh, and again, on this one, you can see if you were to just try and add length at the bottom here, you wouldn't put a straight, a straight piece on the bottom. Um, you, can, you can add length here. My bit of paper's not quite long enough. But what you'd want to do is, let's say you wanted to add an inch, you'd end up having to mark all the way along to get the same shape for the hem. Um, and then that's going to give you your, your kind of new hemline to, to match the original one. But you wouldn't just draw a straight line and make this straight. Um, that, that won't really give you the right shape. That'll give you more of a kind of handkerchief hem um, rather than for this kind of circle skirt here. OK, so let's just switch my camera back. OK, so hopefully that's given you some ideas about how to get started lengthening and shortening. So some things to think about. So thinking about where you need the extra length. Look at. So we've been through some of the um, past examples in some of the previous uh, Tuesday techniques where we have um, talked about making a toile and I'd highly recommend making a toile and when you make your toile draw on where that waist point is you know where it says on the pattern where it thinks the waist should be make a mark either using tailor's tacks or draw it on with a pen and that will give you some clues as to where your waist is compared to where the pattern's meant to have a waist equally the same look for the bust point markings make the make those markings on your pattern as well um, and then any hip lines. And then you can just compare your, your body shape with the shape of the pattern that you're trying to make. And then you can see, you know, is does it fit from here to here? Then that's great. You haven't got to make any changes. If you just need to shorten it between the bust point and the waist, then you can look for the easiest line to choose. Um, and again, if you're shortening bodice, then remember, you're going to have to do the front and the back. You might have to if you shorten the neckline, for example, you might have to adjust any facing pieces or things that are going to feed into that. Um, and then just think about pocket positioning as well. So if you do lengthen a skirt um, that's got maybe patch pockets or something like that, then you may want to think about the pocket positioning. Um, <clears throat> so. So, yeah, just playing around with some of those pieces. Um, and in the examples that I've done today, I've taken a PDF pattern and I've just printed it to four pages per sheet. And that gives you just about a half scale pattern. Um, and so if you just want to get started practicing with this, then that's one way that you can do that without printing reams and reams of paper. Um, you know, you just stick it together and have a go. Use it with some real pattern pieces, because I think that really helps you think about, OK, those details like the darts, what am I going to do about the dart? Maybe um, maybe try it, maybe make one up in half size. Um, and then that will give you some clues as to how it affects the line of the dress or the proportions. Um, I was thinking as well that if you maybe want to shorten a jacket, for example, sometimes the way it's been designed is that the the line of where the sleeve falls kind of corresponds to a detail on the jacket, for example. So some of the three quarter sleeves 
often sit in the same line as where a pocket might be. And so you want to also pay attention to the overall proportions of the garment. You know, if if by shortening it dramatically, will you get the same look or the same effect as as the original design um, was trying to achieve? So lots of things to think about there. Um, and I would really encourage you to have a go, you know, cut some things out um make some adjustments and see how they how it changes the pattern do you know what to do with the lines when you're trying to match them up do you can you work out where's the best place to make that adjustment and can you see where the different kind of key markings are on the pattern pieces um so that's our introduction and that's kind of getting us started with our first alterations to patterns um and next week we're going to talk about um shoulder adjustments so i'm going to show you um, from your toile, how you can tell what shoulder adjustments you might need. We're going to look at um, if you've got a very square shoulders or if you've got very sloping shoulders, um, how you might make those changes. If, like me, you've got a forward shoulder, how you might want to make that change on your pattern pieces to get a really nice fit kind of in this area here because this is where all your garments tend to hang from. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this session today. Um, leave me some feedback and let me know whether you found this useful or anything that you've got from the session. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Uh, so 12.30 at, um, on Tuesday and I shall see you then. Bye for now.